Welcome, my name is Cynthia Mock at Rosie Shack, and today we're going to go over the second phase of our SDLC called the analysis phase. The analysis phase of making a software system is this presentation, and welcome. Okay. All right, let's introduce ourselves to the analysis phase. The analysis phase is more planning. We went over feasibility and we went over doing an interview at the company. But you can go much deeper into, into understanding the systems and processes of the company to come out with the system they need. This is very important in database design. Let's see. Um, let me turn off my circle so you can see the title. Okay, the importance of analysis and software development. Effective analysis helps to identify user requirements and expectations early in the development process. It minimizes risks by ensuring that potential challenges are recognized and addressed, leading to a better project outcomes. In the analysis phase, you take a deep look at the system to make sure it is designed correctly. It's very important that you understand that the details we're getting into here. Make sure that your software is developed correctly so it doesn't break information or put in unclean information, so it understands what everybody needs to use effectively. Okay, the objectives of the analysis phase. The main objectives include understanding client needs, defining project scope, and establishing clear specifications. Successful analysis results in well-informed stakeholders and a streamlined development process. Doing the first few phases correctly can get you to the goal of a good design system. If you're not meeting their needs or the flow of information isn't working correctly, there's something where you won't get a rehire or you might not be able to fulfill your contract. Making sure that you do this analysis correctly is very important. Okay, an overview of the process. The analysis process typically involves data gathering, creating models, and validating requirements. This ensures that all the aspects of the project are considered and documented before moving on to design. If this phase is done correctly, you can save money and time. All right, data gathering. Data gathering about what they need started in the feasibility phase and it crosses over into the analysis phase. The analysis phase you're going to do some data collecting and data gathering and understanding. Techniques for gathering data. Let's go on to it. Techniques for data collection. Common techniques for data collection include interviews, surveys, observations, and document analysis. Each method serves a distinct purpose, enabling anal analysts to gather both quantitative and qualitative data which lays the foundation for subsequent analysis and design processes. So um, what you need to do is look and get some information about the real data that they need to use. Databases need to understand their data. Okay, the importance of accurate data. It's very important when you talk to data analysts about things that are clean, and done correctly, like normalized, having accurate data in the system is very important. Accurate data can help them make a business decision. Inaccurate data can break the business. Let's see here. Accurate data is essential for informed decision making during the analysis phase. Errors in data can lead to flawed requirements, increased costs, and prolonged project timelines. Emphasizing the necessity of validation and verification processes during data collection. Okay, organizing, let me turn off my camera. Organizing and documenting data. Proper organization and documentation of data facilitate easy access and retrieval during the analysis phase. 
Utilizing tools like spreadsheets and database aids and categorizing and storing information systematically ensuring, ensures that details remain clear and traceable. Diagramming specifically can ensure that the right data is getting to the right place. Okay, let's go ahead and look at two tools for analyzing the data correctly besides just gathering it that help you structure the database correctly. One, we're going to look at a big picture of how a whole organization is flowing the data. The other one, we're going to look at entities, what people need and what fields are going to them. Let's see here. What are DFD? Oh, I don't understand the DFD. The DFD is called a data flow diagram. What you're basically doing is a diagram that shows you how the flows of data flow. Data flow diagrams are graphical representations that illustrate how data moves through the system. They can help stakeholders to understand the interactions between the processes and the data, providing clarification in the system. The system has to function. Nobody has a computer just doing nothing nonsense. Nothing nonsense is no. The data flow diagrams show you where the information is going and how it's supposed to work. If you do this, you'll have a better design because you'll get the information to the right place. This is done on the organizational level. Okay, let me turn off my camera. Understanding data flow diagram components, and we're going to go into this in more detail. Data flow diagrams consist of processes that transport inputs to outputs. The data stores can hold data, and the data flows that represent the movement of the data between the processes and the stores. Each component plays a crucial role in depicting the overall system of functionality. I'm going to tell you that you look at this picture, and you're going to notice how it shows you where things are processed and where they're going. It's not about people. It's about the data flow at the business. Business analysts do things like this with like business processes too, to make sure that things are going through correctly. Okay. All right, steps to create data. To create effective DFDs, start by identifying processes, determining inputs and outputs, and mapping data flows. Use standard symbols to ensure clarity and consistency in communication with stakeholders. We will do a breakout video on this soon where I'm going to show you the actual diagrams. I'm going to open up Illustrator. We're going to do one, and I'm going to walk you through creating a data flow diagram because it gives you the big picture. It allows a computer scientist to take the information from the data collections and create a really big picture of what you might need for a system or a database. It might even work for a game trying to figure out what goes to where. Okay, analyzing DFDs for insight. Analyzing a DFD helps identify inefficiencies and communication gaps within a system. By reviewing the data flows and the processes, stakeholders can make informed decisions to enhance system performance and integration. Hmm. So we see that this will help the design be correct. It'll put the processes and the stakeholders and decisions in place. Okay, once you're done with your DFD and why I did it in this order, which was a little bit of a flip around from what Prezi gave me, you do your energy entity relationship diagrams. You can have breakouts with these that really dive into an entity and give you some detail, but we're going to do the broad stroke right here. And this is also going to be something that has a breakout in the next few weeks. I'm going to do DFDs and I'm going to do energy relationship diagrams to actually show you how to do them so you can do them. Okay, let's look at it. A definition and purpose of an ERD. 
ERDs, or energy entity relationship diagrams, illustrate the data entities within a system and their interrelationships. They serve as a blueprint for data modeling, aiding developers in understanding the structure and create and constraints of the data involved in the system. Components of ERDs. ERDs consist of entities which represent data objects and the relationships that depict how these entities interact. Common components include attributes of entities, primary keys, and foreign keys, contributing to a comprehensive view of data structure. You're going to take a deep look of what fields have to go where, how it moves around within the organization, and exactly who needs to look at what. That's very important because a quick hack of putting your tables together with ERDs, you do your ERDs, and break it up into tables by entity. That is not quite normalized, but it's almost normalized enough to work. Okay, creating ERDs, ERDs. To create effective ERD, begin by identifying the key entities and defining their relationships. Utilize standard symbols for entities, connecting lines for relationships, and ensure all data attributes are accurately represented for clarity and communication. We we're going to do a breakout on how to actually do this. I'm going to show you an example of an ERD on something simple. I'm still coming up with what I should do as an example. I might do medical because that's a real job. We might do a system there. Analyzing ERDs. Analyzing an ERD allows for the validation of data relationships and the identifying identification of potential redundancies. Redundancies, that's not good because then you're tallying things incorrectly. This critical review enhances data integrity and informs necessary adjustments for system implementation, ensuring alignment with the business requirements. Okay, thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. Um, this is a playlist and I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna put a thing in the doobly-doo of how to get to the playlist because the things that built up to this, this wouldn't be that confusing if you had watched them. This presentation was made by, <laughs> this is mad, ha. This presentation was made with Prezi AI and you can find it at www.prezi.com. My tip jar is below in case you wanna tip me for upgrading your typing job or getting you some help. It's at www.tiptopjar.com and the name for the tip jar is Silver Eyes. Have a great weekend. Thank you from Rosie Shack, and I hope you have a great day.